have a look at Pragna Nantav on four east. Okay. So this is this is like a prototypical Pragna Nantav game. This is from yesterday. This is exactly how Pragna Nantav plays when he's playing well. And he's got the right opponent, von Forest. Okay. So this line's been played a lot this tournament. And he played ace. They've been playing e6 for the most part. A6 isn't played very often. Bishop d2, then e6. B5. C5. It's all blocked up. Okay. Now, this move is very committal and probably bad, but that's how Von Foris plays. Very committal and probably bad. Um, yeah, knight e4 is uh, engine approved, bishop e7, but he likes to mix things up. Okay, e5. And in this position, white played a very strange move. It's the second engine move. Um, but basically, you have to ignore what black's doing here and do what you're doing on the queen side. So one thing white can do is knight a2 and then knight to b4 and put pressure here. He played queen a3, and the idea is I'm going to take this and your a-pawn's pinned, so I'm just winning. Because I'm going to keep taking on b5. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in this position, the best move is b4, sacrificing a pawn, and he played it. Keeping white's, you know, pieces at bay there. Rook b8. Back to a3, and then a5. So black's down a pawn, but he is dominating the b-file. White's queen is stuck on a3, which seems sort of silly. And the engine says black has compensation for the pawn, but not quite enough. Okay, bishop e2, bishop e7, castles, castles, rook fd1. He's like, I'm a pawn up, great. And e4 is um, hated by the engine. It really hates this move. It wants to play rook e8. And, you know, it's not clear if I want to play e4 or take this. Typically, when I play rook e8, my intention is to take this. You can't take with the knight because your c-pawn's hanging. If you take with the pawn, then I play knight f8, knight e6. So I'm putting pressure on the pawn, and my knight's really good on e6. So that's probably the idea behind this move. Mm -hmm. But instead, he played e4, knight e1, and now black's going to try to win on the king's side, and white's already winning on the queen's side. The move e4 blocks the bishop. So heretofore, white couldn't play rook b1 because the bishop was defending it. Now I can play rook b1 and b4 and be up a pawn and push my queen's side. So e4, not good. So yeah. in this game, when von Foris makes big decisions like e5 or e4, they're bad. So let me just ask a quick quick question. So when you say black's winning on the king side and white's winning on the queen side, mm -hmm. what are you basing that on? All the black's pieces are over there? Yeah, usually so, when you, you have like an arrow pointing in one direction. Okay. That'll, you know, white has more space over here. White's, yeah, I can see white White's a pawn up on the queen side, and white's going to play b4 and be a pawn up and have pass pawn. Black is going to attack on the king's side, but his bishop isn't on this diagonal. So it's going to be really hard and take a long time to play like knight here and get your rook in here and get your queen over here. It just takes forever because this bishop should be on c7. So yeah, we can okay. do those things more quickly. Okay, bishop g4. He wants to trade the white squared bishops. Um, then you can start attacking on the king's side more. Rook b1, he wants to play b4. And he plays b4. And the engine just says white's winning. I mean, e4 is just a very bad strategical move. Because he doesn't really have a kingside attack to speak of. He's just waiting to lose on the queen side. Because he's down a pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... Yeah. yeah, he's down a pawn. So he's waiting to lose. Nice move. Looks like it's almost resigns right away. Damn. But he defends. Never play f3. This gives him access to the d3 square. So his knight can go to e5. He wants to take this. Mess up white's pawns, black's pawns. If black takes, then my knight can come in here. Mm -hmm. That's Which is what happens. 
plays knight c2 because he doesn't want his rook to get trapped. So he lets make sure his rook can get out. And now the bishop is defending the a5 pawn. So this is just, just a safe move. In this position, h4 is fine. In what position? Oh, it was later in the game. Okay, this is fine. Yeah, here, Svidler was shocked at the move that Prague and Anta played. He thought that it was nice that this is open here because black is sort of tied down to the A pawn. So maybe white can get over here soon. And he played F4, lock it, locking it up. And he was like surprised by that move, but it's it doesn't matter. It's so winning. So they locked up the king side. So he thought here. that king was and white and was going to come up this Yeah, way. like white could play rook g1 and try to come up in here. Yeah. But they're sort of blocking it up. Okay. Okay, he defended his c pawn. Knight b4 is a really strong move. So you're threatening this and this. So the guy takes it. Oh, you can play knight b8. If he takes it, we play a6. And if you take the pawn and I take this, you can't save c6. It's falling. Position's collapsing. And if you play rook a7, then I can take on b4. So knight b4 was really good. And, I mean, knight b is like resigning. You can't play moves like knight b8. You, get, you, know, you, get a, you know, come on. Hey, take, take your knight on b4. Knight f7. The knight can take this or come to d6. Whichever is funnier. Now he comes in this way. Yeah, he's just having fun. In this position, uh, I want to play knight takes c6. You can't take with the rook because I queen, and you can't take with the king because I take your knight. So this is a like unstoppable threat. So he played here, stopping it, mm -hmm. but giving this away. Played knight here. He wants to play knight check and then queen. So rook a it's forced. Bishop a5. He takes the pawn. Knight check. Bishop takes. Knight takes c6. Rook takes g7. And he resigned here. And this is a position Kaidnov would say black is down a king. White's king's really good and black's king's ridiculous. And he says this wins, king here, king here, mate. Or e6, king here, king takes pawn. And the engine says plus 10 for white. So that was like a lot of fun for Pragnananta, but it really showed a lack of understanding, uh, I think, for Jordan. Play e5, which is not recommended by the engine. And e4 is just a really bad move. e4 is just, I mean, we need, we need to have the option to keep this open so we can play knight, e, knight e4 later or knight f8 to e6 and pressure d5. We would like white to take this at some point so we can take this. So this is this is just like basically giving up. Now white's winning over here and black doesn't didn't give any counterplay against the king. So now saying black's winning on the king's side, black is winning on the king's side eventually, but since the bishop's on e7, we, we can't get our bishop to this diagonal. We can't get our queen out here. And the knights can't really it's just, move It's just too anywhere. slow. E4 is just an incredibly bad move. And the thing is, sometimes you make incredibly bad moves and then the game goes on. Problem with this move is you can't take it back. Yeah. You can't be like, wait, I'll go back here because I like my bishop, you know, stopping b4. Mm -hmm. So you can't sack a pawn, control the b file, then give the b file back and let the guy play b4. That just doesn't make any sense. Now I'm just up a past pawn. And the queen's not good here, especially if you want to attack the king. So very sloppy game by Van Forest. Nice game by Prognananta, which helped him get very, very, very close to 2,700, which unfortunately he needed to draw or win today, I think, to get right to 2,700, but he lost. So uh -huh. back to the drawing board. It'll be 2,700 by the end of the tournament. So. Mm. It, hey, Donko. It, it's, it's all good in the hood. You got modded.